If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, spiritual coach and transformational shaman, psychic, medium, channel, blah, 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 energy healer, empath. Yeah, all the things. So this is Ascend Fridays. So we are looking at how to recognize that the magic is real. And so we do things today that are all about experiencing the divine or watching someone else get an experience of the divine. And in, in this case, that's what we're going to be doing here with Ann Traeger. And thank you, Ann, for being on the show. Ann was one of our winners of our drawing for people who are left a review for us while we were trying to get to new and notable, which we did. Woohoo! Then that doesn't mean that we don't want more reviews. Please, 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 please give us some more reviews, preferably five star. And so, uh, but Ann won this reading and we are doing today, we're doing a business energy review reading. And what that means is that we're going to be looking at the business and how it is impacted by the energy of the owner. And so, and tell us a little bit about what your business is and how, you know, what, what the size of it is and that sort of thing. Hello, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really grateful to be here. So I, the business I we're talking about today is called Potentializer Academy, where I help high achievers to reclaim their time, energy, and focus in order to express their full potential, whatever that may be. Okay. And I work okay. primarily with mid-level to senior executives and business owners and people who have, who want to have more impact. And I help them to have more impact by getting in touch with that. Currently, well, last year we did six figures. Wonderful. There's a little bit of other activity from a previous business that's still mixed in there with it, which I'm not against because, Hey, that's great take it where it comes. And I love that previous activity as well. So I'm really happy. And most of that's delegated out. I also work with a number of partners. So I have nice little funnels of things coming in. And however, that's not exactly the clients I want to be working with. So there, that's about, that's a quick sort of summary of where okay. I am in this business. So when you say partners, are you talking about JV partners, joint venture, or are you talking about like actual partners in your business? So there, there are coaching platforms because it's a coaching business. So they mm -hmm. send um, clients okay. my way, my, my way. So, you know, okay. So the SAS. organization of the, uh, of the, of the coaching business. Okay. But yeah. very convenient for having clients sure. come in all the time and keep the calendar full. However, yeah. that's not where I want to be going with my business ultimately. So, you know, we're on the, the, the next step is then to be moving away from that. This is my fourth business in my lifetime. And I've had them in multiple in different industries and things like that. So yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. And how many people are in your business right now? Is it just you? Is it you and a virtual assistant? Do you have a bunch of team? What's, what's the dynamic there? So it's me and for the parts of the business that are not coaching. I have an associate who does that part of the business, which has nothing to do with coaching. Okay. And are we reading the coaching business or are we reading the other one? The coaching business. Okay. So the coaching business is just you. It's just me. Exactly. Okay, good. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do an expanded personal reading because when a business is just you or just you and a small team, then you are the business and the business is you. The business is built out of your energy field. And so since the business is built from your energy field, whatever your blocks are, the business blocks will be. And so that's, that's what we're going to do. If we, if you were a larger corporation and, you know, and you had multiple divisions and departments and things like that, we would do, and the energy, the business would have its own energy field. And therefore we would read the energy field of the business rather than your energy field personally. And, you know, we could do both obviously, but it's just a different read, right? So this is why I ask these questions. Okay. So you and I covered all the details about how this works and what the, what the instructions are and things like that. Cause 
you guys have heard this on the podcast multiple times and I don't feel like you need to hear it a million times. So, <laughs> so we covered that off camera. And so the only question I have left is, do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes, you do. Okay. Give me one second and I will be there. Okay. So as I approach your energy field, the first thing that I'm seeing is sort of like, it's like you are in the center of a carousel, a merry-go-round, mm -hmm. and the, there's all this stuff spinning around you. And, you know, it's like you're in the eye of the storm sort of thing, right? You're in the center, being able to watch all this spinning stuff going around you. It feels like, what it feels like is these are potential opportunities, right? That you're, you, you have a sense of where you're going with your business, but you aren't solidly locked into it. And there's like all, all this stuff spinning around you, trying to figure out which way to go and what to do and so on like that. So this doesn't feel problematic. It feels like you've called this in to provide you with options and they are coming in a plenty, right? And so your your biggest challenge is going to be one, slowing down the carousel <laughs> and two, <laughs> picking an option, right? Oh, so yes. I don't see a problem with this energy. It's, it's just there, okay? All right, okay. let me pop into your field now. So if, just a reminder to let me in to any shields you've got going on there. A little Kelly-sized hole. You don't have to take, please don't take the shields down. Just make a Kelly-sized hole, Okay. Ah, <sighs> well done. Thank you. Got in. Okay. And let's see what we've got here. Hmm. Darkness. Why are we in darkness? So darkness often, no, this darkness is reflecting confusion, lack of clarity, sense of, you know, I don't know which way to go. I'm not really clear on what to do. There's no solidity. It's this sense of, so, so here's the thing about lack of clarity. It's almost, I, I want to say, I'm going to say almost, cause you should never say never, but <laughs> it is almost never about clarity. It's more about resistance, right? So there. Yeah. So there's a, a, a piece in here around and, and the resistance is often around an identity shift. And I'll know more about that as we get into the blocks, but I'm just saying, statistically speaking, it's often about identity shift because when we make massive shifts in our business, we also have to up-level ourselves to become the person that that business is run by. Right. Mm -hmm. So that sounds accurate that there is a, a a shift up yeah and and potentially the confusion is like so what what is that shift i i mean how to make that shift shift it's not right. even what is the shift it's like how do i make it or maybe yeah. it's who, how do i become that person is mm -hmm. is a more accurate mm -hmm. uh question i would say uh, because i think you know what kind of shift you want to make it it's just a matter of how do i become the person who can make that shift i don't know what that person looks like right and so this is about finding models for that person so that you can identify what that is right so you know if you, i know you've been listening to the podcast you've been following the journey about me me being told i was going to be famous by the end of the year and me having to wrap my head around what famous looked like and you know how do you how do you talk to famous people and find out well you tell the universe i need to figure this out and they send you famous people <laughs> it's not gonna work, right so you don't worry about the how you just set your intention for the what Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a reminder that we provide the destination and the motivation. The universe provides the navigation. The how is not our problem. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So I can sort of let go with the how question and, and yes. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and say, you know, I need a model. Help me, help me to wrap my head around how this works. Right. Mm. And the other, the other pathway, because they're telling me there is another pathway. That's not the pathway I generally take, but <laughs> they're saying there's another path. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the other path is to not use your head so much and to instead send. Have I heard that before? Yes. <laughs> uh, I know. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm the use my head person. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the other pathway is to not use your head so much and just ask the universe to send you experiences that turn you into the person you need to be. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And so that's another pot, an, another way, because that's typically how the universe works. And those of us who are control freaks and try and control with our heads, we ask for, you know, help me wrap my head around it. <laughs> No, and that secondary, that second solution sounds like a good one right now that fits, you know, it feels like it fits. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. So, all right, let me see if there's anything else in here that they want me to see. Yeah, a little bit of imposter syndrome, but that's not surprising when you're doing an identity up level. We all feel like we, we aren't quite there when we're because we aren't. That's the whole point of an identity up level is we're not, you know, and it's that fake it till you make it sort of thing. Right. But, you know, it's like, it's, you know, I really hate that phrase. I say it, but I hate that phrase. It's really more of a live into the intention of who you intend to become. Right. It's, it's very different than fake it till you make it, which is, you know, pretending, right. It's just like, no, I'm going to live into it to the best of my ability, best of my knowledge. I'm going to stay conscious. I'm going to, you know, show up and be whatever I need to be. I'm going to be conscious of who I'm choosing to be in the moment. Right. So, so I do have a, a, a question about that. Like that imposter thing is that I, mm-hmm. I, I get the feeling in my process that some of that is just like these old patterns that I am shedding, which would correspond to some, you know, to where I am in my life right now and stuff like that. And I'm wondering how much of it is that the old patterns, you, you know, that I still need to shed and how much of it is this is something else. I don't know. Is it, there might. I mean, I'll be able to tell you a little more about that when we get to the third chakra, but right now it feels like it's less about old patterns and more about the function of identity up leveling. Okay. okay. You know, cause that's just by definition, mm. you know, when you, when you're up leveling, you, you're always going to have a little bit of that. I don't know how to do this. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because okay. you don't. You know, it's just a function of the the process itself, right? Okay. So it feels it feels fine. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a block per se. It just okay. feels like a function of the experience. So okay. Great. All right. Let me see if there's anything else in here before we move into the seventh chakra. Nope. Okay. Coming into the seventh chakra now. That's your crown. Uh Okay, good energy flow in, no energy flow out. It gets up to the crown and then stops. Huh. So, trying to, oftentimes, nope, the energy's there. That's interesting. You know, oftentimes when there's no energy flow out, it's because the energy's being redirected or leaking or something like that. But this is just not being allowed out. It's coming all the way back up to the crown and then just not going out again. So um, <clears throat> there is a, when we have our, so our energy flow is designed to come from the universe through our crowns down to the base of our, our torso back up and out to the universe, creating a circuit there. And then doing the same thing from the ground up to the top of our head and back down again. And we create the circuit between earth and sky, right? This is how we balance ourselves as spiritual and physical beings is through this circuitry, right? Mm -hmm. And so what's happening for you is that you've got part of the circuit shut down. You're not letting the energy out back up into the universe. So there's a, a way in which you're not... It's like you're accepting energy from the universe, but you're not becoming part of the universe back again, right? So this, and we'll see this in the sixth chakra. We'll look at this more clearly, but based on this energy pattern, you know, I'm going to bet there's a little bit of issue around trust in self and trust in the universe because <laughs> of that, because that, that, that's a, no, I'm not part of the whole big picture, right? So it's we'll- Story of my life. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, but that's what that feels like to me. And so, you know, there's, you know, the tree meditation, which I'll put a link to in the bio or in the the show notes rather is a good way to work on that, but it feels less for you about. So most of the time I give people the assignment for tree meditation. It's because there's trauma stuff and they're, 
they're, you know, not, they're not letting energy in or whatever, right? There may be issues around being a natural channel and they're shutting down the energy coming in, but with the energy not going out, this is not going to be, I mean, yeah, you can use the tree meditation to help you some, but you're going to need to clear the sixth chakra thing for this to really go away. Right. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in depth than the sixth, sixth chakra, but this is, this is not a quick fix tree meditation thing. This is an indicator of something more significant in the sixth chakra. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. All right. So let's look at, so the good news is, is the energy is coming in, which means you are getting information from your guides, which is good. They, they like to talk to you. It's good. And your higher self. And let's see here. Let me check the other issues, uh, other potential blocks. Um, no, masculine looks good. So that's good. We've got, uh, oh, serious mind on overdrive going on. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know. So, okay. you know, that's also a trust in the universe thing, just for the record. So um, six two projector. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, but it's also a, a trust in the universe piece because yeah. we overthink and we over control when we don't trust that the universe is conspiring for us. That's good. Right. So <clears throat> that if I were to give you a mantra, I would, I would make that your mantra. The universe is conspiring for my highest and best good. All I have to do is look and see what it sent me, right? Mm -hmm. That is more solid um, perspective, okay? Are you hearing me okay? Because I just got to yeah. notice the internet is unstable. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you. <laughs> All right, I'm plugged in to my ethernet cable and it's still telling me unstable. Mm -hmm. I hate that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the let me check the next piece here. Okay, nope, not to that. Nope, you're good there. Okay, so this chakra looks good uh, with those two exceptions. Okay, okay, so we're coming down into the third eye now. I already know we have trust in the universe, trust in self issues. So I'm going to start there, which is not normally where I start, but we, we're already there. So let's do that. Um, so this is a reminder that the, the, your trust in yourself and your trust in the universe are reflections of each other because you are the universe and the universe is you. If you do not trust yourself, you will not trust the universe. If you do not trust the universe, you will not trust yourself. Hmm. Okay. Those are reflective as above, so below. Right. And so if you are trying to break out of the pattern of lack of trust, you can pick either path to get out of that pattern. So, but you have to be supportive in both paths, right? So you can focus on one path or the other, but you have to not be doing self sabotage stuff in the other path in the, at the same time, right? So the, if you use the mantra I just gave you, mm -hmm. and then you make sure that you don't make promises to yourself that you don't keep, that you are you know, very good at keeping your word to yourself, mm. uh, this is not about... <clears throat> although it can be if you're, if you're not good at keeping your word to others either, then you definitely need to clean that up too. But I usually find that most people that I work with are very good at keeping their word to others and they suck at keeping their word to themselves, right? So that creates the lack of trust in self because your inner child is going, but you promised and then you didn't do it, right? It's like, so. Yeah, you know, I... I'm trying to see how that applies. Okay. Because I like have, I'm like, I'm really good about my boundaries. I never have those long to-do lists. I'm really kind to myself. I've got all this stuff going on here. I know that this is like, there's something there, but I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing what it is, you know, like it's not coming to me in like an obvious way. You yeah. Know? Where so, are you on your own priority list? Huh? Oh, I'm like at the top of the list. I mean, Perfect. like okay. completely, totally at the top of the list. And I have been in uh, for, for a really long time. Like that's something I'm very protective of that. Okay. 
All right. So it sounds like you've done the work on the the trust in self piece. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of the trust in the universe piece, right? So it's more like the trust, like it's like been all my life. I'm the only one I've been able to trust. So, Mm. you know, for me, it's been, if you want, you know, if you really want something done, you're the only one who's going to do it because that's the story of, you know, blah, 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 you know, the stories. Okay. Yes. So, so so I take care of myself and then I really, really do have trust issues with everybody else. And so then right. obviously with the universe. So maybe there's something about trusting other people. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, you have a lot of evidence that says that other people aren't trustworthy, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we could go into around that, but we don't have time for that on this call. But yeah. the, the, the trust in the universe piece and the what I want to cover on this call specifically because we're doing a business energy review mm-hmm. is when you don't trust other people, it's going to make it harder for you to get clients, mm. Yeah. right? Because what you feel is what other people, you, what you will draw to you, right? Mm-hmm. So you will draw to you untrusting people. And they will inherently be harder to sell into your programs because they don't trust, right? Yeah. You'll have to build a huge depth of no like trust in order to just get them to, to even think about making a call and that sort of th- stuff, right? So, you know, it's this is a critical factor for your business in terms of getting a lot more business in the door, um, <clears throat> especially when you're dealing with executives because they already have their down, you know, their shields up, you know, to 50,000 because they're working in corporate America and that is just toxic oftentimes. And so, mm-hmm. you know, to, to add your trust factors into it is it, mm-hmm. it just amplifies it harder. Right. So sure. knowing, knowing who your market is. Right. So the, the piece that I would say here, that's most critical for you around the trust factor is, so I think it's a matter of how you're trusting. Right. So, you know, this is one of the things that I talk about in the Welcome to the Woo program is that when we grow up in environments where we could not trust our elders, right? Or a lot of us don't ever grow out of the child versions of trust. Mm -hmm. So, the child version of trust is I'm going to hand over responsibility for my well being to you. And I'm going to trust that you're not going to hurt me or damage me or, you know, treat me badly, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a very disempowered stance, but it's a child stance. Mm. As children, that's the only option we have because if they don't feed us and clothe us and house us, then we will die, right? So we have to have that. But as adults, we need to shift the way that we trust into a new dynamic, And that needs to be, I'm going to trust you to be who you say you are until you prove to me otherwise. Mm. I am still responsible for my own well-being. I am still responsible for my own health and safety. I am responsible for myself, but I am going to allow you into my life and trust you to be who you say you are until I have a reason to believe otherwise. Okay. What comes when you say that? That sound, that resonates by the yeah. way, with what completely and, and resonates with some stuff I've been picking up lately about how I need to shift into a more, you know, a, a less dependent codependent kind of thing. Um, and then the question that comes up is I tend to see or feel I'm more clairsentient, I suppose is what you call mm-hmm. it, what people really are. And there's a big gap between what they really are and what they show up as. Okay. I know exactly. And I don't know how to deal with that because then I'm just like, well, you know, this is, this is bull that you're kind of pulling out there and and I see it immediately or feel it immediately kind of thing. Yeah. So, So this is actually a function of where you are in your coaching process. So this is what I, what I see, I see a lot of coaches come in in this state, right? So they come in and they're like, okay, I can see who you're supposed to be, who your authentic self is. And my job is to get you from where you are to your authentic self. That's not my job. That's not my job. No, it's not. Right. And so the, the seeing who the person is 
quote unquote is mm -hmm. in their idyllic self. Right. Am I catching this? Okay. So you, that's what you're yeah. seeing or, okay. I just want to well, make sure I see, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, yeah, I see the path. I see where they're going. I, yeah. It's something like that. And I, and I, and I understand that my job is to meet them where they are and to accompany them to the next step. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I've learned to like slow down and to be there where they are. I've learned that. I know that much. Okay. Yeah. And to really hold that space where they can, can move, but still I'm, I, there's something maybe related to the trust that I can see because, because I can see that, you know, right. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is ignore that. Ignore it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because, that makes sense. Yeah. It, 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 it isn't what's real now. And it isn't even what's going to be real anytime in the near future, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so true. Yeah, so yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what you, what you're seeing is their soul self. You're seeing the person that they were before they came into this life and had all their experiences. And, you know, we, we talk about that artisanal well of who we are and the garbage getting thrown into the well and smushing right. it down and the whole thing. So what you're seeing is the person they were when they were of an artisanal well when they walked in the door, right? Yeah. And, yeah. but yeah. that's not who they are right now. Yeah. Okay. And so it's not really relevant at all. Yeah. So it's totally not pertinent to the situation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I used to have a lot of that when I, when I was, you know, starting out and I just, it, it was not helpful. And it's much easier to be with what is when you let go of that. Right. Yeah. 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 So, okay. yeah. So, and then, okay. So feel into it. If you let go of that and you just meet them where they are, where does the trust piece, uh, how does the trust piece feel to you? Well, then I believe that the trust is somewhere else. And then I need to kind of, uh, that it's going to be feeling into that. What, how, 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 how do I trust this, who you are, you know, to be who you are that you say you are, you know, until you show me otherwise, as you say, you know, yeah. I, I, guess, I, I guess I don't even know what that means. So I have to kind of figure out and test it and see, you know, yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. With yeah. clients, it's not as crucial because, you know, you're holding a container for them and you're, you, you know, you're not exposing a ton of yourself to them. You're only giving them as much as they need in order to feel connected and, you know, feel close and whatever, because it's not about you. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. but working out the trust issues in general helps with the a law of attraction well, piece. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause yeah. it's so much when I'm have somebody, when I'm in the coaching situation, that's not an issue at all. It's more about, okay, you know, who, you know, attracting the clients. It's about partnering with people. It's about all that stuff right. that happens when you're, when you need to bring in, that's where the trust issue is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I would start to question is to say, no one has ever been in there to help me before. Huh. Yeah. Right. Rather than no one ever helps me period. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to bet it's been a long time since you've asked for help. <laughs> and so you have no idea whether or not anybody's there for you now, because, you know, you learned to stop asking for help years ago. Right. So, you know, this, this is another pathway out of this process mm -hmm. is to give people the opportunity to help and to not wait until you're desperate to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just, ask for little bits of help and see how it goes because then yeah. you're building evidence that help actually may come right um yeah. and no, if it and, doesn't and it's not it, a heart attack very pertinent very pertinent the the only ones i ask for help are the ones whom i really trust right. <laughs> and they are few <laughs> right so you know if you just ask for small bits of help from a, a lot of people around you uh -huh. you know i'm betting that you're going to find that you get a lot of help now there's also the other side of this, which is when we don't trust, we tend to surround ourselves with people who are takers. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good way to also indicate who those people are, because when you ask for small amounts of help, they're going to look at you like you've got three heads. And they'll be okay. like, why are you asking me for help? Our, our agreement is that I, you give to me and you get to feel good about yourself. That's our agreement. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a mm -hmm. fair trade. And why are you asking me for help? Right. Mm -hmm. So if, when, when you get that response, you'll know who the takers are in your life, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 so, yeah. 
I, I potentially may already have eliminated a lot of them because I have and, like zero tolerance for that at like yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was going to yeah. say you, you feel like somebody who, who probably will have done that, but uh, <laughs> you know, for those listening and might want to yeah, try the process, exactly. you know? Um, so, okay. okay. Let me see if that feels like it's going to be enough for you in this chakra. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the, there's, let me check the transmitter and receiver for you here. Hmm. That's weird. All right, what is that? So when I'm doing the transmitter, what I see is your third eye opens and there's like these gears that grind and push and the energy goes out and then the gears take up all the energy and the transmitter energy doesn't go anywhere. So what this feels like is that you go out to try and get information from the astral and then you get up in your head and you go into mind on overdrive about, you know, what's it going to be? Is it right? You know, what, it, what should it be? And your, your mind starts to take over trying to figure out what it is that you're going to be getting. And it just doesn't bring you anything. You go right into your head. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would love to know how to get out of that cycle because boy, I just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> yet. Uh, yet. <laughs> this is, it's actually a function of the trust issue because right. you are trying to, you're trying to short circuit the process with the universe because you're not open to trusting what it's going to give you. Yeah. And that's so weird because like, I also know profoundly, like deep inside my gut, at least perhaps not here, but in my gut, that I have always been like carried along by, I mean, like that that's the only explanation I can yeah. say, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's, when I, when I feel into this, what it feels like is, you know, well, I could bring the information in. But if I say it out loud and I'm wrong, then they screwed me over, right? It's it's that yeah. sort of thing. No, right? it's more like I'll be punished or something. Uh, okay. Something, yeah. Right, or I'll be humiliated. Taken, no, the right, yeah. no, the, it, what it is is the rug will be pulled out from under me because that's the experience. That's the re repetitive pattern is yeah. the rug will be put out of pulled out from under me. So and that's my fear. That's my deep down profound fear. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's where this, you know, gears grinding thing comes from. Okay. Mm. It's the fear of being wrong and having that happen. Right. And okay. So the, the solution to that is very simple. Oh, um, yay. I love so simple solutions. Yeah. Please. I, I did this when I was first proving to myself I was actually psychic. Um, I went into a room full of people and they were like, oh, give us readings. I was like, oh, I don't do that without my cards. I don't. And they were like, oh, yeah, it's okay. And I was like, look, I'll do this with the understanding that everything that comes out of my mouth is probably wrong. Mm. They're like, okay. okay. And yeah, yeah, that yeah. just freed me up. I just said, everything's probably wrong. And I just did it. So what you need to do is just do a bunch of practice things for people. And tell them that you're probably wrong and do it enough until you go, yeah, I'm not wrong. <laughs> well, so, because so that's it's not weird. convincing because them, it's convincing you. When I'm, right? Yeah. So, because I think it has more to do with the stuff that's about me. Because when I'm in like a coaching session, I never question myself at all. Like I just know the information that comes out. I know what what's right and I know what's to say, what to say. So I'm trying to figure out where it is. I mean, and it's a knowing, it's a, like a physical knowing. It's like, I'm not, it, this isn't me. I know what you know, that kind of stuff, but at some point then the, the, the judgy kind of mind stuff happens. So I right. have to be attentive to where that is and then own that wrong potential wrongness in those moments. Yeah. 
but it's yeah. not necessarily with other people because like since forever I've been saying, oh, you know, did you know? <laughs> and then, and people then, don't always want to know, right? So now yeah. I wait until they want to know. Okay. Yes. But, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, that's fine. But then if it's not with other people, then it wouldn't be about not speaking it out loud. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe there's stuff I'm still not having. Speaking out loud. Yeah. There's something. Point. It is about other people in some way because okay. the, there's no rug being pulled out from under you if you're just doing it internally, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah, so there's stuff I'm just not not seeing. I mean, like I'm so uh, so afraid that I'm not even seeing it, not even seeing. Yeah. It. Okay. There's something, and you know, it may just be that. So there's a knowing we get when we know the answer, mm -hmm. versus a knowing we get when the answer is handed to us. And it may be that the knowing that you're experiencing is knowing the answer and the thing that's causing you uh, is when it's handed to you. Oh, okay. Nice distinction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that I can wrap my mind around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because so to speak, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get out of the mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that would account for the difference, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So let's. Huh. Let me see what else is in here, if anything. Oh, yes. Creativity usurped by the mind. Not a big surprise. So when we create, it is supposed to come out of the second chakra. When we overthink things, we often get the creativity is yanked out of the second chakra and thought to death in the, in the sixth, right? So it gets yanked up into the sixth chakra where we're creating using universal source energy and intuition and whatever, but we're, we're yanking it out of its creative space. And so the, the invitation is to allow yourself to sit in the soup of a creative process before you get your brain involved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let it come to fruition in the soup of your second chakra before you structure it in your, hmm. in your seventh chakra. Okay. Right? So now that I, 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 I totally get it. It's different words to something I've been experiencing recently, which is like saying, like this voice saying, you have to just sit down and let it emerge. Let yeah. what you have to say emerge. And then I go and I do my social, I'm, I do this and I do that. And it comes out like this, except it's not emerging because I don't ever sit and let it emerge. Right. So, and I'm so good at that, like formulating the words. I mean, I, this is, this is my thing, the words, finding the words and stuff that I can, I can just churn it out, but right. the it isn't it yet. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the piece I'm going to give you that I think is going to be helpful because the sit and let it emerge does not fit with your current energetic. Mm. Okay. You're not yeah. the, the sitting still and just letting something you're going to be like crazy. Right. Yeah. What I do is I put it into the percolator. Okay. okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to bring the idea up, you know, the creation that you're doing and you're going to say, huh, interesting. I'm going to allow that to percolate and you stick it in the back of your brain and you let it percolate and it will come forward periodically and you'll chew on it for a minute or two and then you'll put it back in the percolator. Right. Okay. And so that's how you do it without doing the sit and let it emerge thing, because that, that drives me crazy. I don't have the patience for that. Your, your energy says you're not going to have the patience for it either. Right. So put it in the percolator. This is why I call it sitting in the soup is because right. I'm in the soup doing everything else while the soup is cooking me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah, like, yeah. okay, and when I'm when I'm cooked, then the soup emerges and it tells me what it is, right? And so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's you know, more a process that I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So that's uh, I'll give you that because I think that's going to be more more effective for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't okay. have to like hound on myself about not sitting and waiting for it to emerge. And what could that mean? And how afraid am I of that? Blah, 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 because it's yeah. just that that's just not my process. Okay. Yeah. I got it. And what I would say is the, the one thing that you do want to guard against is jumping in and trying to structure it too quickly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cause the mind on overdrive will do that. Right. It'll be like, Oh, I've got this. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, is it, is it ready for that? Are you sure it's ready for that? I want you to wait until you're well past thinking is ready for it and mm. then question it again. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's fantastic. Cause as soon as I structure something, I get bored and I move on. Right. So it, 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 you know, which is too bad. I, I mean, like really. <laughs> right. And the reason for that is that it's not fully formed because right. if it was fully formed and you structured it, then you would be excited to implement it. Right. 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 Okay. So you're, you're, you're structuring partially formed stuff and then going, well, there's no energy here. I'm off. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And okay. that's because you're not waiting for it to come to fruition. So uh, where, how do I get the patience for this stuff? I mean, so you are a ready, fire, aim person like me. <laughs> and, you know, that's great. If speed of implementation leads to speed of business growth. I get it. And, and, you know, but the other side of that coin is we often jump leap before we look. Right? Yeah, and, yep, yep. and so in this case, what you're looking to do is first thing is you got to slow down hmm. because mind on overdrive uh, will automatically have you running to keep up with yourself, mm. right? And to keep up with your mind, right? Mm. And so the first thing you have to do is slow down. You got to work on getting out of that mind on overdrive. Mind on overdrive is a control pattern, right? Mm -hmm. It's a way that we try and make sure everything's safe. Mm -hmm. And we want to stay a step ahead of everybody else. And we have to stay a step ahead of everybody else. It's how we create our value. It's how we keep ourselves safe. It's, it's all the things, right? Um, but it's also do it mode. And mm -hmm. do it mode is an emergency mode. It's not meant to be done for more than, a, you know, 15, 20 minutes um, at a time. Because it's the mode that you go into when there is an emergency. Somebody is having a heart attack. Somebody has fallen down the stairs. We need do it mode. Everybody's got to line up behind me and get on board and do what I say because there is no room for anything else. We've got to handle this emergency situation. And then when you're done, you have a little meltdown. Your adrenaline makes you cry and, and shake and all the things, right? When you live in mind on overdrive, you're in do it mode all the time. Hmm. It's, it's hard on your body because you get an adrenaline rush constantly. So you, you may end up with adrenal fatigue and things like that. Um, it's also hard on getting weight loss to happen because your cortisol levels are through the roof because you're spiking that adrenaline and spiking the cortisol and so all of the things. But when you can address the mind on overdrive, then you can slow down enough to be like, okay, so let me just be with the question of where's the next step, hmm. right? You know, in what I see a lot with people who are in beginning phases, and this isn't you because you're already over the six figure mark, but it, people in the beginning phases go into this and they go into the panic pivot and they go into la, 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 I got to figure it out. I don't have enough money coming in the door and they short circuit everything because I got to get the cash, right? Mm, 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 mm. Once you're at a stage where you don't have the survival mode cash issues to deal with, then you have a little more breathing room. Sometimes if you haven't structured your business in such a way that you're like up to your ears and clients and no time to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then that creates its own do it mode yeah. thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So in which case I would say, raise your prices by, you know, 20% and reduce your client load by 20%. Yeah. yeah. Let the attrition take people out and then you have more breathing space, right? Mm. But the, for you, this is about learning how to slow down enough. You know, when you look at what the millionaires and billionaires out there are doing, they are all taking a day a week to just be with the possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Gates is like spending an entire day doing nothing but reading and taking in information and ideating and playing with ideas, you know, and just being like, eh, eh, whatever, you know. Yeah. And there's, this is where you work on your business rather than in your business. Yeah. Right. And yeah, you, you need yeah, to give yourself the space to do that. Right. Yeah. And then, and I've been trying to do that and it's not structured in a way that's allowing, I mean, there's stuff is getting in the way, stuff yeah. is getting in the way and I keep trying to schedule it in and it's like not really happening the way I want it to do. Uh, I want it to uh, not enough because yeah. I have managed to get some of that time in, but not enough. 
Yeah. Um, well, there's and a that's little because- bit of, that's the old stuff I was saying, a little bit of panic mode. Oh my God, I still have to, you know, make sure that it's all covered when it is all covered, you know, kind right. of thing. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, part of that is because you're trying to fit it in around the edges. Yeah. And part of it is that when you do actually schedule it, you don't hold it as sacrosanct. Yeah. And so trust, trust. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I see the connections. Like, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So start off with one day a month that you set aside to work on your business. Mm-hmm. You know, a full day, nothing but working on the business. I happened to have that happen to me yesterday where I had zero appointments all day. And I was like, oh my God, this is lovely. I, or I don't, yeah, it was one of the days, but yes, I was so excited, right? Yeah. I got to work all day and not interrupted by anything or anyone. It was such a joy, right? I was like, Ooh, so happy. Yeah. And so, you know, it, there is, there is a way in which it gets very exciting yeah. for that to be the case. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that allows you to stay passionate and excited about your business. Yeah. 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 No, no, right? I like that. And I like the idea of slowing down because I keep thinking, well, oh, it should be done by now, which is of course ridiculous. I mean, you know, well, so we make good. up our own yeah. deadlines, right? Yeah, uh, right. Of course I'm making this up. I, pl- I make the rules, right? So right. Wh- what, what are you talking about? Kind of thing. Right. So exactly. Okay. And I have also just for the mine on overdrive kind of thing have also scheduled a 10 day silent retreat in September. Oh. Yeah. And it was, it just came, I've, I've done them before, but like 20 years ago and, and all of a sudden it, I had, I woke up a few months ago and I'm like, oh, it's time to do this again. <laughs> and I found one and it's all in the schedule and it's all, you know, whatever. And I so can't wait because I just <laughs> like, I can get out of my mind. I can get out of my mind. I can get out of my mind kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, and if you're that excited about it, you may want to start a meditation practice. Oh, I, I have a meditation. Okay. Yeah. So then that's very and I, interesting. And I did a day long thing a while ago just to get back into the longer kind of meditation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, believe me, you think this is my non overload? You should have seen me before I discovered meditation and martial <laughs> arts that grounded me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's, let me come back in, see if there's anything else here I need to know about. Nope. You're standing in your power. That looks good. Oh, we didn't do the receiver. Let me do the receiver. I got out of order. So I've lost my, my pattern. Hmm. Okay. So the receiver is what we normally think of as our intuition, right? (laughs) It's picking up on whatever's going on in the ethers around you. And what's interesting is you are receiving the information, but it is being held in a cavity in your head. It is not being moved into anywhere, right? It's like, nope, you can go this far and no further, right? And so that again, feels like a lack of trust issue. So you're getting the information, but you don't trust the information, right? Um, You know, you may... You may evaluate it. You may on rare occasion act on it, but you're like, "Mm, is this real? I don't know if it's real. It's going through the, it's going through the bullshit meter in your brain, right? (laughs) Instead of being received, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, So So it's being questioned. Yeah. Okay. So So I get clear the filters or something. Yeah. uh, Again, it's a trust in the universe thing. Yeah. It's going back to that. Okay. All right. Let's come down into the fifth chakra. Okay. See how my mouth is sort of opening and closing. Mm -hmm. This is your, this is the physical expression of your self-expression. And so what's interesting is that the mouth is opening and closing like you're talking but nothing's coming out. And so what this says to me is that, and I'm betting when we get down to the identity thing, this is going to be reflected there in the third chakra too. But what this says to me is that you're saying what you know you need to say, not what's true for you. This is like the story of my life. Again, it's like the pattern. It's like the pattern. And it's just, I keep trying to peel it away, peel it away, peel it away. And 
still comes up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let me, I, I may have some insight into that for you. Give me a second. Let me look at the other, the two patterns that may be playing in. Well, one, one in particular. Okay. We know there's mind on overdrive. Thank you. Okay. They, they just keep whacking me with that. I'm like, I'm not looking at this. <laughs> seven chakra right now i will i will i will take that into account as i'm looking at this okay thank you okay um Okay, so, uh, you know, this is a business read for you. So I want to be very clear that this is about your business, not about your personal life. Okay. Um, there is a pattern, there's a block that happens in this chakra that is called people pleasing communication. Okay. Yeah. And typically, that's a child pattern in personal relationships where you're trying to avoid conflict. This is not the case for you. You are not having that form of people-pleasing communication. What you are having is people-pleasing communication around your target market. Mm. You are, and it's, and they're telling me it's the mind on overdrive, right? That's why they shoved the mind on overdrive in there where I, when I started looking for it, right? Is because they are, they're saying that you're overthinking mm. what your people need, right? You are your client. You, or you were your client five years ago, right? Hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. I mean, were you that the person that you're trying to talk to now five years ago? Mm -hmm. That's typically uh, what I people- I think I overcame those, uh, yeah, whatever I'm helping them overcame, overcome. Yeah. I've just never worked in corporate. So I, I was okay. never them, but right. yeah, that maybe that's, there's, that's the kind of the disconnect for me. Yeah, but you do. Okay, so let me just say this, because I work with a lot of people in corporate, okay? You are, you have corporate energy, even though you never worked in corporate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. corporate energy is like tight, controlled, you know, there's, there's like trust issues going on, there's the overdrive, mind on overdrive, that the, all of this stuff is the stuff you see in corporate America. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that energy is there. So it's an overachiever thing, right? You know, yeah. and so I think what's happening for you is you're overthinking the the corporate thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and you're, you're trying to shift your language based on that. And, and I, what they're saying is stop it. Okay. Talk to you five years ago and, you know, frame it within the corporate context. That's fine. But you want to talk to you five years ago because hmm. you know who that is. You're trying to guess who the other people are. Yeah. 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 yeah right. Yeah. Okay. And you already know who they are. You know, mm -hmm. look at the clients you're working with. You already know who they are. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's not about the corporate environment. It's about the people. Right. And it's about what the people our need. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I can see that. And I can, and I see very clearly where I have resistances and things that I don't want to be saying to the, you know, or I want to be saying, or do I do you, you know, and okay. Yeah. Yeah, stop, just, stop editing stop yourself. Stop yeah. yeah Say what's true. Right. Okay. Cause I've worked with corporate clients who are way into magic, way into energy work, way into personal development, way into so many things. Okay. Yeah. And I can even swear, I think. And then oh, I swear all the time. Yeah. My clients came in off of my podcast who were, <laughs> were swearing up a storm. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I yeah. can, I, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just, just, you know, if that's who you are, then that's who you are. Be who you are. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you can't attract people. You will not, you can't, you will be limitedly attracting people if you are editing yourself mm. because you're not being all of who you are mm. and they will. And remember, because you have trust issues and they're empaths, if you're holding back part of who you are, they're going to not trust it because they're going to feel that right. Wonders of working with empaths. Yes. Um, yes, we are hard to fool. <laughs> <laughs> Our bullshit meters are high, right? <sighs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. Let me feel what else is in here. Hmm. Yeah. There's a little bit of asking permission. So, 
This again is a child pattern, but this feels like a child pattern with the universe for you and your business. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's like looking for the stamp of approval on your forehead from the universe. Mm. Am I going in the right direction? Am I doing the right thing? Da, da, da. The universe is not your parent. It's your partner. I know. I know. So I, know somebody, I just want somebody to tell me I'm doing the right thing. I know it's my child. Nobody ever told me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. I know this. I just do. But okay. It's not going to happen. I got to do it for myself. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if you need to hear it, you're doing the right thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're good. You're golden. You're on the right track. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Okay. Checking, checking other blocks in this chakra. little bit of hiding your true self and unwilling to be vulnerable, you know, and, but that's not surprising given what you were doing with the, you know, with the languaging and the marketing and the things. So, you know, that'll go away when you adjust the other stuff. So it's not a, it, it wasn't a, it's not the issue. It's the, a, a function of the overthinking, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not worried about that. I wouldn't work on that directly. It'll go away when you deal with the other stuff. Okay. It's a symptom, not a cause. Okay. And oh, this one though. Yeah. There's a, there's an invisibility piece here. I, that's the word that just came to mind. Yep. Yep. So yeah. it popped in there. Oh, you really want to be invisible or. Yes. Cause when you're not visible, you can't be a target. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that one you're definitely going to have to work on for your business, right? So the question you have to ask yourself is what's the worst that could happen if I'm seen bigly, right? Mm. Right. Yeah, and then and it's about being seen bigly because, right. You know, I yeah, can walk into is... a room and be seen by everybody. I don't have a problem with that. It's right. on a bigger scale. Yeah. Right. So the question you have to ask is, what is it about the bigger scale? What is the fear? Right. Is it that, you know, trolls are going to come and get you and, you know, take it, take your feet out from under you and, you know, you're going to fall from grace or, you know, whatever. Or is it that you're going to be a target and some, you know, somebody's going to come and find you and stalk you or, you know, or is it that you're going to lose your freedom? You know, there's lots of ways that, that, be, that there's fear of being seen bigly. So, you know, the key is to sit with that question and to identify what the issue is and then debunk it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, accept yeah. it depending upon what the issue is directly. Yeah. Okay. Find okay. a solution. <laughs> Right. Find a solution. Yes. For me, the being seen bigly was around losing my freedom mm -hmm. uh, because freedom's my top value. Right. So yeah. it was like, I don't want to be scheduled to within an inch of my life and I don't want to have to have security guards around my house. And I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, all, I don't have to limit my movements and, you know, whatever. I don't want to have to take other people into account in, in terms of, you know, whether it's safe for me to go out or not. Right. I, I don't want to have that experience. And then, you know, what I discovered is that's not the experience that people who are famous have when I started talking to them. And I was like, oh, well, then that's okay then, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, well, then what's the good side of being seen bigly, right? right? right. And, you know, the, the good side is, you know, more money, more opportunities, more influence, more ways to make a difference in the world, more ways to, uh, you know, more ways to could donate to charity and be part of making the world a better place and, you know, more power to do that, right? So there's upsides in the big end, right? But you got to, yeah. you know, we, we often just focus on the stuff we don't want and we don't think about right. the stuff we want associated with it. So that's, that's another piece to, to sort of chew on there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, that's right. clear. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if there's anything else in here. Nope. Okay. Coming down into the heart chakra. <laughs> Okay. Heart chakra is pretty tightly closed. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, no energy flowing in or out. Yeah. 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 Why am I so not surprised? 
<laughs> yeah. A big old knife in your back feeling of betrayal. This feels like it's, um, it's parental. Mm -hmm. Feels like you came in and had this expectation. Well, your soul didn't have this expectation because your soul took cho chose your parents for a reason. But yourself, when you became aware, felt betrayed that your parents weren't the idyllic parents, that they weren't the parents they were supposed to be in, like you, you didn't get what you were supposed to have sort of thing. This is what this energy feels like is I didn't get what I needed, right? You know, you guys, you guys did a shitty job of raising me sort of thing, right? Um, this is a core wound for you. Yeah. Yeah. So orphan. That explains it. it, it, okay. it well, so mother died when I was seven, separated from father at eight. Father, out of all his seven children, forgot me, like, like literally forgot me. He would say, oh, but I have, like, as he grew older, I didn't live with him. But then when I went and saw him later, he was like, I just don't have a daughter named Anne, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is that's, this that's, is the this is the trail. Yeah. 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 There is. There okay. Is. Yeah, that's a core wound. Okay. So. so the the first thing to do to address this wound is to reverse the thinking instead of pointing the finger and saying you didn't do for me, it's to change it to I didn't get. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because when you change it to I didn't get, then you have the ability to make sure that you do get in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. And you remove the parents from the picture of needing to solve the problem because they're not going to. Right. Um, well, and, and very clearly understand that it's because of that, that I am where I am today and all is good. You know, that kind of work has been. Yes. And done to a certain extent, extent and yes. still the, the whole trust issue is. Yeah. To, so, you know, the yeah. question I would ask is before you went to that, did you get pissed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you yeah. give yourself a, Maybe I need to be a lot of room to express it? Because what I find a lot in spiritual fields, in, in the spiritual world, is that people know they're supposed to go to forgiveness. And what did I get out of it? Oh, 20 years and all of, of that analysis to get to, to, to forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you may have done this work, but I just, I, I need to yeah, say it out yeah. loud because sometimes yeah. I see that people skip this step and that can be a stumbling point. Mm -hmm. And you may have gotten to the point where you said, yes, this is what made me who I am and I like who I am and therefore that's okay and whatever. But, but if you didn't give yourself sufficient space to be bullshit pissed that you didn't get what you needed, yeah. there is a way in which that says to your your inner child that you deserved it. Huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. okay. So, you know, check and see if there's anything left in there. Right. Yeah. Oh, and um, I'm sure there is. I'm yeah. pretty sure there is. Yeah. 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 So yeah, the wounds, they still have little corners of pus all over the place. All yeah. Over so did you ever reconnect to your ancestral line is the other question. So recently I've been reconnecting, I mean, spiritually reconnecting with the, I, I've skipped over a few generations looking for those who had a better relationship to money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's sort of the work that I've been doing recently is mm -hmm. to like, like, and literally skipping over a couple of generations and yeah. Know. And you know, that is that is what it is, but there's a way in which you really need to connect into your ancestral line in order to be fully successful because okay. your, your success on the planet comes through your physical embodiment on the planet because success is a embodied thing, right? It's not a, you know, abundance is an energetic thing. Success mm -hmm. is an embodied thing, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So success, money, it, you know, financial grounding in the, in the world comes through embodiment and embodiment comes from your ancestors, right? It comes from your familial line. So if you are in denial of your ancestors, you're going to have a hard time being successful because your ancestors are what bring you onto the planet, make you grounded into it and the whole nine yards. Right. So, so you what don't have to, to connect into the ancestral line. Sorry. So, so with your dad denying your existence, 
-hmm. right? There's there, I would personally, I would recommend doing some family constellation work on that because mm -hmm. that can help to ground you into your father's line more clearly. And uh, Kathy Shiron, who's been on the podcast, um, she is a fantastic family constellation person. So I can share her contact information with you uh, when, when we're done. But that I would definitely do through family constellation work. And then that way you can find a way to allow the flow of life through you, which is really what it comes down to. It's about letting go of the behaviors of the person and allowing the, the, the gratitude for your life to flow through, even if, you know, your life, meaning you're on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you for putting me on the planet, right? Whereas you can remove, when you can separate the person from the life giver, the behaviors from the life giver, that's when you can connect into the family line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I, I, I understand there's work to be done there still. I think some of it's done. I, I really, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you've and done a lot of stuff around it. It's just that this is, there's, there's strings, there's sticky yeah, strings. There's just little pieces, right. Pieces you know, sticky strings. Yeah. And then uh, maybe not skipping over those generations actually is, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it's my a, latest, a, that, that was the latest expression of the anger it was like, yeah. okay, well, you know, F which is you, why you yeah. have to express it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So, and yeah. we go through stages. I mean, I spent, uh, you know, I spent a fair number of years going, I'm not going to be part of my family. Screw that. They, they suck. Right. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. You know, and, and eventually you have to be like, well, I am part of my family. So, you know, let yeah, me, yeah. let me figure out how to be part of my family without having to deal with the toxicity of the people who are still alive. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, presumably there's some connection with my uh, maternal lineage as well that needs a little repair. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you lose your a parent before the age of 10, it's, yeah. there's a loss of there, there's a, uh, there's a significance to the connection of the years between zero and 10. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would say there's some work to do to, to connect back in just because, mm -hmm. you know, you were just coming into the age of reason. You didn't have a chance to really solidify in that state. And so, you know, yeah, there's, there's some work to be done there as well. And again, family constellation work could help a lot with that too. So, okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's see what else is going on in here. Yeah. Lots of grief. Hmm. So this is not grief over the death of your mother. I feel like you've processed that. Mm -hmm. This is grief over the love not received. Hmm. So what happens is that when we let love in, that grief over the love not received will be squeezed out, which means that as you start to open your heart and allow people in, Every time you feel loved, you're probably going to cry. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because that's some tough. of the grief of not having felt loved before comes out as you feel the love in. Mm -hmm. When you let enough love in, eventually all the grief goes out and that stops happening, right? You stop crying. So, yeah. So that's, that's still in there to be worked on. Um, the trust issues are, you know, again part of the reason why there's no opening for in or out. And, you know, again, it's going back to that trust issue. If you, if you start to address that as trust issues, then, then this, you will have to do an active process on this to open this heart chakra up again, but you need to do the trust issues first. Okay. Okay. Trust first, heart second. Yeah. So there, there is a story in your heart chakra. It's dying right now, but it's there. There's still vestiges of it there uh, that says I'm not lovable, which is not surprising given how closed your heart chakra is. When we don't receive love, we feel unlovable. It's, it's an internally created yeah. story. But because you have done so much work on your self-love, it's mm -hmm. dying right now. So 
there's vestiges of it. It's just a little bit, little niggle in the background, but it's not like hardcore. So I feel like that's going away of its own accord. You don't really need to do anything with that. And it will absolutely evaporate once you get your heart chakra open. So it's not something to work on directly. Okay. okay. Coming into the third chakra. All right, let's look at identity first. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. You know, those, uh, the blow up men that are in front of car dealerships that are like, <laughs> this, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, that's the identity that I see. It's like, look at me, look at me. I'm not really solid in who I am, but look at me, look at me. Right. It's, it's that sort of energy, which is goes back to the, I, 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 you know, the, the mouth yeah. chewing and talking without anything coming out sort of energy. So not surprising. We, we already knew that. Right. So no big deal there. As you address the, the people pleasing communication around your target market and, and start to address and to speak who you are into the world. I think this is going to no. it'll help, but it's not going to take care of it altogether. If we address the invisibility too, does, yes. Okay. The invisibility piece needs to be addressed as well in order for that to go away and for you to just stand up and be you. Okay. So those two pieces need to happen. You don't need to do direct work on this piece because doing those pieces will, will yeah. impact this one. Right. Okay. Let's look at the inner child. Okay. So your inner child is like, two years old. She is sitting in a butter yellow dead, you know, sunshine, yellow dress in the mud. <laughs> she's got pretty little frilly socks on and the pretty shoes. And she's sitting in the mud and she has covered her face in mud and her dress is covered in mud. And she's just sitting there and nobody is looking at her. Nobody's paying any attention to her, right? She's just sitting there by herself. She's not upset. She's not sad, but she is making a mess of herself happily in a mud puddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. So yeah. the first thing that I notice is that she's younger than most of the inner children that I see. Most mm -hmm. inner children that I see are somewhere between like five and six years old. That's usually where they are. She's two. Two is almost pre-verbal, right? It's, okay. it's, she's, she's in the, the now and mind stage of life, right? Okay. <laughs> That's what a two-year-old is. They're in opposition, right? Mm -hmm. So two-year-olds are, are self-identifying. They're separating from parent. Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out what else this means. Give me a second. How is this relating to the business? Hold on, because this is business read. So um, is your business two years old? No. No. How old is your business? Uh, it started in 2018. Okay. So much older. So it's not your business age. Okay. So let me check. Um, it feels like it's two years old sometimes, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost as if it that would actually describe pretty clearly where I feel like I'm kind of stuck, you know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, typically for people, this does not, this is not how people show up. But in business, sometimes I get different reads on things because of it's related to the business. So in this case, you know, it feels like the energy is in that oppositional energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm in this mud puddle. I've got this pretty dress on there. I'm supposed to be looking good, but I've plopped myself into a mud puddle and I'm covering my face and, and I'm all dirty and I'm beyond repair for this dress and I'm going to have to be changed and I'm still in diapers. And, you know, the, and it just, there's just this sense of having made a mess of it right? That there was this like perfect little girl image and then plop, right? And so the, the two-year-old energy is this sense of trying to separate from, from the parent, right? So when this shows up as a business, right? One of the things that I talk to business owners about is that when your business gets to a certain level, you have to take it out of your body, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we gestate, especially for women, we gestate our businesses in our body, just like we would gestate a baby. Right. And 
it's so weird that I'm saying this because it doesn't feel like your business is in the stage where that would be required, but that's what's showing up. So let me see how that co correlates because usually it's, it's, you know, when you get to, you know, a couple hundred thousand a year in that business. And you said that your business and the other business were combined, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. So, um, well, and it's always touch and go And this year, probably not as much. So, you know, there's like, it's like, yeah. 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 So the up and down is, is probably a function of your marketing. Take a look at your marketing yeah. because you tend a tendency to market a lot, get a bunch of clients, stop marketing because you're full. And then you, then you finish up with those clients and then you got to start marketing again. So make your marketing more consistent. You won't have that problem. Um, the, uh, but this is, let me see what this is about. Hold on. Let me, let me just feel into this. Yeah, it almost feels like your business is throwing a temper tantrum, I'm trying to figure out why. So one of the things that I warn people about when they first start a business is not putting the entire weight of their self-worth on top of the business. Like if the business fails, I'm a failure, right? Um, and it feels like there's something you have put on top of the business hmm. that it's bucking under the weight of. Like there's a... Okay. Yeah. Actually, that that does that make sense to you? Yeah, it, it it makes sense. I haven't thought about it. I mean, I as an overthinking, you know, coach and all of that. There's all you know the purpose and blah 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 that we all, well, not we all, but that I at least, yeah, you know, <laughs> have have formulated about this business. When actually, if I step back and think of it as a business, I've had a business, I've had businesses before that have been more or less successful. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe if I could just step back and say, Hey, it's just a business, it'll lighten things up a little. Yeah. It, it does feel like it's very heavy and that there's like the weight of a lot of expectations. That's why she looked perfect. And then she dropped in the mud puddle. Yeah, she's right. Like, Come it's, on, give me a break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's like yeah. all these expectations are too much. Yeah. Now you don't expect yeah. anything of me because I I'm muddy, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. there's there's that energy in there, and it just feels like there's so much weight on top of it. And you know, what if you treated it like a game instead mm -hmm. of a you know, whatever it is that you're yeah, yeah, doing with yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Uh, but if you that, played, that a lot of sense. you know, especially since she's two, right. Yeah. You know, the, the play aspect is super huge when you're at that age, right. You're exploring, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're also playing, but you're also self-identifying. And, you know, there's this, this sort of, um, there's a mine versus yours versus, you know, now versus no, being able to say no is big at that air age, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the boundary piece is, is big in there, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's all about boundaries, right? So, yeah. So I, I feel like we've, we got where you need to go there, right? Okay. So right. I, I have a question about that yeah. because, um, about something related to the solar plexus is a, is a, a a while ago, I don't know, a month maybe, came out <laughs> in a meditative state and then continually, like, it, it was like this, the inner child, presumably, but an older version, mm -hmm. you know, opening and crawling out. Alien around, style, yep. Back <laughs> opening, crawling out, you know, and we went ahead this back and forth and then came and sitting next to me and this kind of stuff. And, and all this, this has been going on for a while. And so I'm like, okay. How old? Uh -huh. Six, seven. So right around the time you lost your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe a little older, even, I don't know. Six, seven. Okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah so yeah. It may be, so one of the things that happens in, is that we learn how, you know, when we, when things go wrong in our lives, we, we have to step up and be the adult, right? Yeah. And then we end up leaving that version of ourselves in control of our lives. Right. Like they're right, driving okay. the bus, right? Yeah. So uh, it may be trying to tell you, hey, I'm, I'm driving the bus and I'm tired. Could you take over? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. So my initial reaction was like, oh gosh, it looks like you need a little love. So, you know, just like sending lots of yeah. love, but yeah, this, this would make a lot of sense. Cause yeah, definitely it, it, been right. driving the bus and had to drive the bus and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. That would make sense. Yeah. Okay. So that would be a visualization to do is to sit down and take them out of the driver's seat. It, yeah. it is not a one and done thing because that's a habit. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you'll probably have to do that a lot of times, but anytime you start to feel overwhelmed is when you have to take them out of the driver's seat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. The, the feeling of overwhelm is a function of your inner child being in the driver's seat. So, because yeah. okay. they don't know what to do, right? <clears throat> they are incapable. They're incompetent because they're in the driver's seat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me see what the blocks are in here. Okay. So there's a not good enough block, which we, we kind of referenced in the, the beginning in the aura, right? That's going to be triggered by the up leveling piece. It feels like it's a little bit more in there. You know, this is, this is actually a function of the inner child in the driver's seat too, right? Mm -hmm. Is they're always going to feel like they're not good enough because they're, you know, seven years old trying to drive the bus, right? Yeah. <laughs> Eight years old trying to drive the bus, right? So uh, the, let me see what else here. Yeah, there's some not wanted, not welcome, not important in here. Uh, those are, it's not welcome, not wanted, not important. Those are the layers of the work, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that, that, that's a duh with your dad, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. hello, yeah. no, 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 no big surprise there. Yeah, stunner. Uh, but the fact that you put yourself at the top of your own priority list is the great way to get out of that. So well done on that one. So let's see here, what else? Is your dad with us still? Oh, no, 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 no. And then he passed. Yeah. Okay. Like, and of course he did it. I'm just going to say it. Okay. In my very pissed kind of way, because I'm still kind of pissed about it. Two weeks before I, you know, like I'd planned the flight. I live in <clears> France <throat> to go back and see him. And then he just ups and dies before I have a chance to go with men now. So anyway. Well, yeah. So. so what I'm going to say is that you you may want to connect into his energy on the other side. I know you're pissed at him, but yeah, actually that would, that can right. actually be really cathartic. Oh yeah. You know, because you know, what he could not express to you in this life may come through there. Yeah. So food for thought would be helpful. And, I, and, and yeah. 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 Okay. No, not that, not that. So uh, the word stupid is coming up, which feels out of context for you. Does yeah. that have a meaning to you? Yeah. Yeah. My dad was a genius and he thought all of his children were the replicas of his brain and stuff like that. And so okay. like that. I mean, I mean, like really like not like, like, I mean, he was really one of those kinds of people. Yeah. Like okay. All and drinking and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So, that that yeah, makes yeah. more sense. Cause I was like, I don't understand. It didn't make any sense to me, but that makes sense. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And okay. as much as I know, I'm not stupid and all of that. It <laughs> just Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a, that's, that's contributing to the not good enough piece. Mm. Um, so, you know, if I were you, I would go and take an IQ test oh, well, because yeah what I'm picking up on is that you may in fact be Mensa level. <laughs> so, you know, be hard to call yourself stupid if you're up there or at least on the edge. Right. And then that's a straight debunk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's, it was so out of context. I almost didn't say it <laughs> because I'm like, I'm like that, why, why would that be there? And I'm like, well, but it's there. I'm just going to trust it. Right. <laughs> it's, so, you know, I'm just saying, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm so astonished how these imprints are just there for ever and, you know, and, and stick. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Let's come into the second chakra. Oh. And not a lot of energy here either. Um, it's sludgy. Mm -hmm. So, and let me see what's going on with the sludge. Nah, permission. Okay. So your passion is being blocked by permission to be passionate, which is 
there's a deserving piece in here, or I don't know if deserving isn't necessarily the right word. The it's, it's, is it, is it okay for me to be passionate? Is it, there's a, oh, there it is. Okay. It's a, it's the fear of the rug being pulled out from under you, right? It's the, if I get passionate about something, somebody will take it away from me, right? It's, it's no. that not, not the way I express it sometimes is actually that I, uh, when I get passionate, I'm like completely overpowering. It's like the light in the room. And then I'm like, I, I scare people. I'm afraid people will be afraid of me. Okay. Yeah. I and mean, I've had that experience before where it just, you yeah. Know, like so it, like, too much. Have you done the boundaries for empaths program? No. Okay. Free download on the website, kellysparta.com. Hit the blog button on the right-hand side. There's a, a, um, on the right-hand side of the blog is a button that you can hit to get a free download from the website or free, not download, but an e-course. Mm -hmm. The reason people get intimidated by you when you're in passion mode is because your bound, your energetic boundaries are too wide. Oh, okay. okay. When you pull your energy field in and you get everything solid. Oh, okay. You can be as passionate as you want. You won't have that problem. Sounds like an easy fix, actually. It is an easy fix. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It's a little practice to keep it where it needs to be, but it is an easy fix. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 So it also stops people from feeling intimidated by you and all the other stuff just in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. also helps with not feeling uncomfortable in large crowds and, you know, there, there's not getting run over by other people's strong emotions and all the other sh stuff that, yeah, that goes yeah, along yeah, with it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah super useful tool. And I give it away for free because somebody gave it to me and it was the best gift they ever gave. And I was like, if I could remember who it was, I would have put their name on it, but I don't remember. Um, and so, yeah, so there's that. Uh, so that's sludgy in there. Let me see what else, if anything is going on with that. Sensuality, sexuality feels pretty sludgy too. Um, the so this is creativity, remember. So this is your creative center for your business, right? So when we talk about this from a business perspective, um, the creativity piece is being pulled up into the six chakra by the mind on overdrive, right? And I think part of it is because it's so sludgy in here, because you're oh, not right. giving yourself permission to be passionate, right? And mm -hmm. so your passion is going to drive that thing right now what you're doing is trying to be what you think people want you to be instead of being passionately who you are mm -hmm. right and so when you start putting those pieces together this is going to unsludge and that'll allow you to do the percolation at a faster rate because you're going to let yourself be passionate right mm -hmm. bang in my computer here okay 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 so what's next No, I don't feel anything there. So a little bit of shame showing up in here. Mm -hmm. It does not feel sexually oriented. It feels more like behavior oriented. It feels related to the not good enough stuff. It's like, you know, wow. Oh. oh. No, 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 no. It's connected into that, that same thing you were talking about with, you know, when I'm passionate, other people are intimidated. It's that there's shame yeah. around that for you, right? There's oh, like, okay. like judgment that you are projecting onto yourself from other people being, you know, like overwhelmed yeah. by you. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's, it's related to that. So 